Hey guys, last lesson we were looking at uh, formation of fossil fuels. Now we're looking at the hydrocarbons as fuels. A fuel is a substance that can be used to produce energy. It's usually in the form of heat. Coal, natural gas and petroleum are all fossil fuels, which we just discussed last lesson. Fossil fuels supply most of the world's energy needs. So coal is, one of a, is a fossil fuel and coke is the main product of the distillation of coal. It's about 80% carbon and it's used in an industrial uh, setting as well as household fuel. It can also be used to produce hydrogen gas. Uh, another one is gas and oil. So oil is used in homes and businesses for heating mainly and for use in vehicles. Only small amounts of electricity is from diesel because it's expensive and it's a bit more polluting because it doesn't uh, combust uh, efficiently. And they're classified into six classes based on their purpose, boiling point and the composition. So what kind of hydrocarbons are in there? Another one is purified natural gas. It's a clean and efficient energy source because it uh, combusts completely. About 18% of energy use in Australia is from the purified natural gas, uh, of which 90% of it is methane, with some propane and some butane. It can also be used in vehicles as a fuel. And ethane is removed and used to make plastics or antifreeze. So crude petroleum, which looks like that, a very black group, provides about 40% of Australia's energy use. It contains hydrocarbons between one carbon and a chain of 36 carbons. Fractional distillation is a process to separate based on boiling points. So we'll, we will use different, uh, different heats to heat it up at certain temperature ranges, and then whatever can evaporate at that point we can take off and then continue to get uh, small ranges of certain hydrocarbons. Catalytic cracking breaks molecules and reforms them into smaller ones. So this process is used in petroleum refinery. Octane rating is the ability to resist early ignition. So we don't want uh, fuels to ignite too early because it can damage your equipment. So especially your engines and cars. So higher octane rating is a good thing. So it means it's less likely to ignite too early. Another one is propane and it's mainly used in camping. Uh, so it's used for cooking and lighting. So we burn it and it's given to us in a liquefied form. So that's why we need specific types of canisters for it to hold it under pressure. Ethan is also known as acetylene. So acetylene is used in oxyacetylene torches and therefore welding and cutting because they can produce very, very high heats. Uh, for its safety, it's dissolved in acetone, which is why we, um, we supply in canisters. Wood is another one. This one hasn't been converted into hydrocarbon uh, like fossil fuels have, uh, but it's still a major fuel source in underdeveloped countries. The cellulose burns to produce carbon dioxide and water in a combustion reaction and it's mostly used for domestic fires or stoves in Australia. If wood is burnt in the absence of air, almost pure charcoal is formed. And pure charcoal is pure carbon. Oil shale is a type of rock um, which houses a lot of hydrocarbons in it because it's porous. So it's used in heating. Um, uh, so when we, what we do is we heat the oil shale. So we heat, uh, increase their temperature to allow the oil of similar similar boiling points to be extracted. In mining, it's provided kerosene, diesel and furnace oil. Some shales in Australia produce about 550 litres per tonne of shale. So per tonne of this kind of rock will give us this amount of uh, uh, hydrocarbons. And we have rich deposits in Australia, but because it's not efficient to uh, extract per tonne of rock, it's really too expensive to bother as a fuel. Conversion of some hydrocarbons to petroleum fuel. So fossil fuels are believed to eventually run out and that's why the prices are increasing. 
Synthesis of gas or syngas is the conversion of coal to liquid fuel. Because we have a lot of coal left, but we don't have a lot of um, petroleum. Steam is blown over the hot coke to produce synthesis gas mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. And that's represented in the equation here. So what we have is coke or carbon and water. And what we do is we uh, increase the temperature and then it forms a lot of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. Uh, the syngas is passed over a certain catalyst, so a catalyst reduces the activation uh, energy, so then the bonds can be broken more easily. So this catalyst at high temperature and pressure produces liquid hydrocarbon fuels from the coal, which was a solid before. But in Australia, it's currently too expensive to do, so we don't, we don't do it here. But I think in Brazil and other South American countries, um, it's cheaper there, and that's what they use to get more hydrocarbons uh, for their cars. So before we were saying fossil fuels are from deceased animals and deceased plants and takes millions of years to pressurise and heat them into hydrocarbons. So there are different types of these types of fossil fuels and some of them we've talked about here, so like natural gas and coal. And if we run out of uh, certain fuels like petroleum, we need other ways to get around it. So what people have done have been tried to uh, get coal and then convert it into liquid fuels. So with that, we should answer a few questions. Question six, what, which one is not a hydrocarbon fuel? So petroleum, uh, it's a hydrocarbon fuel. Coal is another one, it's just a solid form. Natural gas, yes, it's a hydrocarbon as well. It has hydrogen and carbon in it. Hydrogen gas, uh, hydrocarbons have both hydrogen and carbon, but hydrogen gas has no carbon. So D is the correct answer in this, point, uh, this question. So next, question seven. What is meant by fractional distillation? Uh, the early ignition of hydrocarbons. Uh, this one's incorrect because remember, the early ignition of hydrocarbons was um, not called fractional distillation. We're looking at octane rating there. The extraction of kerosene from oil shale. Uh, this one is not extracted by fractional distillation. It's a similar process where you heat the, uh, heat the oil shell to get, rid of, get out the kerosene and, and other compounds, but it's not fractional distilla distillation. Um, the production of liquid fuels from coal, this wasn't fractional distillation, this was to do with uh, syngas, remember? Um, using coke and changing the hydrocarbons in coal into liquid so we can use it as uh, fuels for vehicles. So this one is also incorrect. Um, the separation of hydrocarbons based on boiling points. Uh, we can always, if you're not sure, we can look at boiling points. Boiling points mean we're evaporating things. Distillation was also to d evaporate something to make it clean. So this could be the answer. Um, it is the answer because in fractional distillation we boil uh, the, the mixture of hydrocarbons and then at a certain boiling point, uh, a range of them, a range of boiling points, a few different compounds will come up and boil. Um, they can then be tapped off, condensed, and then um, made into a liquid again. And we know that those ones have similar boiling points and melting points, and we can use those for different types of fuels. So question eight, name some uses for the purified natural gas. So natural purified gas, remember, was a gaseous form, and it was pressurized to become a liquefied version. So it can be used as a fuel in vehicles when we uh, pressurize it and convert it into a liquid. Ethane is also removed from this fraction to extract and manufacture plastics. And ethane is also used to manufacture antifreeze, which is to stop cars, car engines from freezing in the cold. Question nine, explain why there is a need to find new forms of fuel. Currently, fuels are generally fossil fuels that we use. And fossil fuels are a finite source because they were made millions of years ago from certain plants that have died and animals that have died. Um, so we have only a set amount uh, stored away in the ground. It's predicted that with the current uses that we have at the moment, that oil reserves will last only another 10 years, but uh, gas reserves for about 40 years, and brown coal for another 700 years, and black coal for another 300 years. So in the next 10 years, we'll at least run out of oil reserves. So we need to figure out a new way to 
to power what, what we want to do. So what we need to do is get off fossil fuels and maybe look at renewable, res uh, renewable energy. Uh, question 10. Describe two methods of refining crude petroleum. So crude petroleum can be uh, gone, gone under fractional distillation and that's the method by which crude oil is heated to certain temperatures and specific molecules with a boiling point or that range of boiling points are evaporated and then condensed to form a fraction. So all these hydrocarbons will be of similar, similar um, boiling point and melting point. We can then also do catalytic cracking and that's the process by which the fractions are placed over a catalyst. So the catalyst reduces the activation energy to allow for carbon chains to be broken and then reformed. And usually this means breaking long chains into shorter chains. So new hydrocarbon chains are shorter and may be produced to, uh, and also may have more branch chains. So these will have similar boiling points as well. So in summary, what we were looking at are different types of hydrocarbon fuels. So coal, uh, natural gas, and um, uh, I guess other liquid type ones. And what were they used for? So we were using it mainly for cars and for heating. Um, but the problem with these hydrocarbon fuels is that they're a finite sort resource. So that means we're going to run out eventually. And we need to now look at other ways to get energy to supply um, our needs for you know, heating or food or um, lighting.